This game is a work of fiction, and its author's imagination. It does not aim to offend, insult, or discriminate anyone on religious, social, economical, species, or any other basis. Any violation of the player's aesthetic sensitivity, active citizenship, or any other spiritual impulse lies on their conscience. Any resemblance of the characters to your real or imaginary friends, neighbors, colleagues, tulpas, is entirely coincidental. All the heroines are of 18 years old and have confirmed their consent on participating in this game. In written form, an expert from the screenwriter's medical history could be provided on demand. This game does not contain any propaganda of voluntary or not ending one's life. Not a single mascot, animal, or human was hurt in the creation of this game. Happy reading. How's it going, nerds? My name is Linkwood, and welcome to episode 5 of Everlasting Summer. In the last episode, we were finding out who we wanted to go. We met Chad Tronic himself, and we're basically just going to be chilling with him, and he's going to show us a little bit around. So let's get right back into what we were doing beforehand. We ended up at the square again. As if this place was all there is to the camp. Lena was sitting on one of the benches, reading some book. Like... Uh, Chad Tronic confidently approached her. Hey, Lena. <laughs> Hello, Lena. Meet the new guy, Semyon. He started briskly. Uh, Hello. Well, you could say we've already met in, in, in a way. Yes. She looked away from the book for a moment, glanced at me, blushed, and ran back to reading, as if not noticing that we were still here. All right, let's go on. I was at first surprised that meeting this girl was reduced to a couple words, but then I thought that it was better that way. Jetronic's vigorous activity did not fit well with Lena's shyness. Well, let's go. Next, we came to a building, which I instantly identified as a canteen. This here. I know, this is where you consume organic food. <coughs> Shit. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> That's what organic food does to me. <laughs> yeah, as, as an American, I can make that joke. It's a dirty, filthy American. Uh, yeah, something like that. Cat. What the hell? On the canteen's porch stood the unfriendly girl who hit me on the back earlier. At the sight of her, my joking mood vanished in a blink of an eye. Really, now is not the best time to be pulling this guy's leg, even though he is quite hilarious. First, I need to figure out... What's what here? Or at least where I am. Her. Her over there. That's Eliza Divichskia. Be careful around her. He spoke in a whisper. Don't ever risk calling her Divichik. Divichik. She doesn't like that. What'd you, what'd you say? What did you call me? She must have heard him. In a blink of an eye, Eliza jumped down from the porch and dashed towards us. All right, you'll manage from here onwards. Chetronic took to his heels. Uh, let's do nothing. Just don't go, don't want to go near her. Lisa, running past, stopped for a moment and growled. I'll deal with you later. I d deal with me. What did I do wrong? I had a forced, a forced guilty smile to my words. But what am I guilty of? She made no reply and carried on chasing Chetronic. Intense music for a second. Looks like I'll have to kill time alone, waiting for dinner. I decided to go east, at least in the direction where east would be in my world. Soon after, I found myself near a football pitch. The game was in full swing there. I guess watching it for a bit wouldn't do wouldn't do any harm. In my childhood and teen years, I was not a bad player myself. I even thought of going professional, but a few industry, in, injuries in a row killed my desire to risk my health for the sake of uncertain chance in the game. Kids of different ages were running around the pitch. I could see a boy about 10 and a girl of about 14 years old. A girl. Hey, that's Ulyana! Alright, so she plays football. What's so surprising? She seems a restless one, after all. I was standing quite far from the pitch, but she still noticed me. Hey you! Ulyana shouted. Wanna play? I didn't know how to answer. 
on one hand, running around for 10 minutes is no big deal. On the other hand, any wrong move in my situation could be my final one. But in any case, my attire wasn't suitable for this weather. If I played in winter boots and warm jeans, I would sweat like a pig. And playing barefoot and without jeans would be simply unethical. Uh, maybe another time, alright. I shouted in response, turned around and walked back. I was followed by Ulyana's screams about my pants or about me being a pansy or something like that. You got a small penis, is what she said. <laughs> Evening was falling, making me so making me feel tired and empty after days wasted with no real purpose. I came back to the square square, sat down on a bench and gave an exhausted sigh. I'd better sit here and wait for dinner. It's easier to search for answers when you're not hungry. They do give food to people here, right? Sure for the yawning, it's like 4 o'clock right now, but I can't sleep, so I thought I'd do this. <laughs> you know, it's curious how the simplest human needs can break the will to ponder on things, to strive for something. For example, I feel hungry now, so I care much less about where I am or what's happening to me. Could great people also be affected by this? And in that case, how did Spartacus start the slave uprising in ancient times? I can only conclude that I am not a great person, and it does not really matter which mechanism I serve as a gear in society. I, uh, serve a gear in society, the Matrix, or a weird pioneer camp. <laughs> yep, I am not a great person. That is my quote for life. <laughs> my thoughts were interrupted by the sounds of bells chiming from a loudspeaker on a light pole. It must be a dinner call. I headed towards the canteen. It was a good thing, and now I knew where it was. Olga was there, standing on the porch. I stopped and looked closely at her, as if I was expecting something. She looked back at me for a while, but at last came closer. Semyon, what are you waiting for? Come on in already. Guess nothing bad can happen if I go with her. My stomach backed me up there. The two of us went inside. The canteen looked like a canteen. I had had a chance to visit a factory canteen at some point in my life. This one was exactly the same, just made a bit cleaner and more modern. Metal chairs and tables, glazed tiles on the walls and floor, unsophisticated tableware with the occasional crack. Guess that's what a canteen a pioneer camp supposed to look like. Semyon waited. Semyon, wait a moment. We'll find you a place to sit. She looked around the place. Diva Shevskaya, Diva Shevskaya, hold it right there. Olga shouted at Eliza, who was walking by. What? What's up with their clothes? Anything wrong with them? Indeed, her entire looked somewhat provocative. No, no, keep it like that. It's cute. Look at the little belly button. Look at the little belly. It's right there, it's a little bit of a show cute. Get your uniform nice and neat right now. Alright, alright, alright. Aliza got a shirt right got a shirt right and walked past, shooting an unpleasant glare at me. So, where could we find you a place to sit? There weren't a lot of free seats. Go over there, next to you Uliana. Uh, maybe I... Yeah, it's fine. The food's already on the table, too. I had no other choice but to accept. In Russian language, koleta... Koteleta is mincemeat, fried or baked in the shape of a ball or, or cylinder. Close to American patties, compote is a drink made f by boiling fresh or dried fruit in a large amount of water. Compote in French. <laughs> I thought I said boiling flesh. I was going to get really confused. <laughs> of course, there was a probability that the cutlets were poisoned with corar. The mashed potato is generally seasoned with arsenic and the glass filled with excellent antifreeze instead of compote. But it all looked so tasty that I had no chance to resist. Hey! What do you want? I replied rather rudely to Oyana, who was sitting next to me. Why didn't you play football with us, pussy? 
Uh, be because my clothes? Said I, pointing at the source of the problem. Oh, alright then, then eat. However, there wasn't much left to eat. My clothes was missing from my plate. Only she could have done it. No, more precisely. None but Yana could have done it. Give me back my cutlet, bitch. In a big family, you snooze, you lose. It costs you a cutlass if you're careless. Give it back. I'm telling you. I will kill you. Uh, do not attempt to take the cutlet. See? I don't have it. Indeed, Oyana's plate was empty. Seeing that the little girl eats as fast as, someone's, as she steals someone's cutlets. Take it easy. We'll work something out now. She grabbed my plate and ran off. There's no point in following her. They wanted the poison to be here. It could have done it a much easier way. About a minute later, Oyana returned and handed me the plate with steaming hot cutlet on it. Here's one for the starving. Uh, th thanks. It was all I could say. I was so hungry, my suspicions were gone in a flash. I picked up the cutlet with my fork and... Ooh! Ugh! What the... What the? Some bug, no, not a bug, an insect. It's got legs and it's wiggling. It's centipede, that's how they're gonna poison you. The plate fell to the floor and broke into pieces. The chair hit me hard on my leg while falling. I'm just like insects up as a child, but these creepy collies appear on my plate, that's just way too much. You little. Well, Yana seemed ready for such a twist and was already at the door, laughing as if she had just heard a fresh stand-up comedy joke. I dashed after her. We ran out of the canteen. We were just a few dozen meters apart, and I felt I would catch this little girl easily. We ran through the square, past the club's house, and ran onto the forest path. I started to gasp for breath. I should have quit smoking, I guess. Oyana passed out of sight on the next turn. It can't be true that she managed to get away from me. It simply can't. I stopped to try to catch my breath again. Night was falling. Looks like I'm lost. It's a bad idea to stay in the woods at night. Better get back to camp. However, I had absolutely no clue which way to go. I don't gotta choose a random. Hmm. All the ellipses. I wandered for quite some time in the forest, and even thought of crying for help. And finally, I saw the camp's fence beyond the trees. Everything fell back into place. The bus is gone. I mumbled quietly. On the one hand, there was nothing strange about that. The bus couldn't stay here there forever. On the other hand, it meant that someone was driving. Because buses don't drive themselves. Or do they? This world seemed too normal. But every event here had at least two explanations for it. An ordinary, real, everyday explanation. And a surreal one. Certainly, the driver could have been off for a snack and I left too soon and that's why in any case this is not the place for me whether the bus drives itself or not was probably an important question but it was m much more important to know how I had got here at all and where here was the fields of the woods stretching towards the horizon had no answers there was nothing familiar about them strange, odd, and alien world. However, at the same time, it was absolutely not frightening. Either my self-preservation instinct decided to resign from its job, or all this running around the camp and the local pioneers had lulled me so much with their carefree normality that I was simply forgetting what had happened to me just a couple hours ago. Although, I probably just had no strength left to worry. All I wanted was some peace, calmness. I wanted to just have a break from it all, and only after that would I continue looking for actors, answers, ready and reloaded. However, that would be some time later. And what about now? Can I allow myself to relax? It got completely dark. In any case, it was better to spend the night in the camp. I was about to head back when someone came up silently from behind. Hello? What are you doing out here so late? 
Uh, it was Slavia standing before me. I was so surprised that I jumped. So you didn't catch Ilyana, did you? She smiled. I nodded disappointedly and sighed. No wonder. No one ever has. Yeah, she's a real rocket girl. She could have found a better use for energy than looking for adventures. You must be hungry. You didn't manage to have dinner after all. Indeed, I had completely forgot about my hunger. But after these words of hers, my stomach drew attention to itself by giving a traitorous rumble. Slavia smiled. Let's go, then. What, is the canteen still open? It's all right. I have the keys. The keys? Yes, I have the keys to all the facilities in this camp. How come? Well, I'm something like the camp's leader's aide here. I see. Well, let's go. It was an offer you can't refuse. When we reached the square, Slavia stopped in her tracks. Excuse me, I should warn you, my roommate... I should warn my roommate that I'll be out late. She's so punctual herself, she'll be worried otherwise. You can go into the canteen, and I'll come in a minute, alright? Uh, alright. I really did not expect to find somebody... Aid, somebody aside from myself there at such a late hour, but that somebody was apparently trying hopelessly to open the door. Without any secret thoughts, I walked up to onto the porch. The lock picker turned out to be Eliza. I should have probably kept off and waited. She looked at me intently for a while and said, Don't just stand there. Give me a hand or something. Meaning, help me. Open the door. Why? Because I want some buns and kelfer. Dinner wasn't big enough. Um, is that really a good idea? Aren't you hungry yourself, huh? Ilyana didn't let you have a normal dinner, did she? She smiled sarcastically. It's true, she didn't. It's fine. Slavia will come now and... What? Guess I shouldn't have said that. I'm off then. And you'll pay for this. You owe me too, already. Having said that, Eliza disappeared into the night. And what was the first one? Slavia didn't keep me waiting for too long. Is everything alright? Yeah, why are you asking? No reason. It's nothing. It would be better if I didn't tell her about Eliza. Everything's fine. I said that and immediately heard a note of dishonesty in my voice. Well, shall we go? As well for Slavia. She seemed not to have noticed anything. Or at least she was pretending she hadn't. We entered the canteen. Wait a bit. I'll go get something. I sat down on a chair and obediently waited for my savior. My dinner was simple, a few buns and a glass of kefir. I wonder. I bet. No wonder. I bet Hungry Pioneers finished everything off. However, even that was far better than most of my usual diet. Lavia sat across the table and looked at me while I was eating. Is there something on my face? No, just... A whole lot of ugly... Oh damn, get wrecked, son. She smiled. So, how did you like your first day at camp? Well, I, I don't really know. It's silly to ask someone who suddenly found himself in a different reality whether he liked the food in the canteen, the camp leader, or his assigned hut. That's all right. You'll soon get used to it. Slavia started, stared out the window dreamily. Frankly, frankly speaking, I had no desire to get used to such things. But as for her, she doesn't know. Or at least, she wants me to think that she doesn't. Well, all in all, it's nice here. I had to somehow break the awkward silence. Do you think so? She asked without any interest. Yeah, this place is so... I wouldn't say retro, but I managed to hold that back. After all, it was retro to me, but what about them? It might be the only kind of life they knew, if the term life was applicable here at all. So how... 
She watched me slowly, closely, as if something important depended on my answer. Well, I don't know. Lovely. Yeah, it's, it, it's lovely here. I guess you're right. She smiled again. It's very good that you think so. M why? Well, not everybody likes it here. People who don't get killed and sent to the brig. And what about you? Me? Yeah. I love it here. It's great. Then you don't need to worry about what other people think. Well, I don't really worry. Slavia laughed. This conversation seemed to be leading me far astray from where I wanted to get to. And... And you're worried yourself. Really? Why do you say so? Well, when someone is chewing so intensely... Ah, I'm sorry. It's okay. I couldn't bring myself to become... To be more cautious around this girl. But why her in particular? Why not any other local inhabitant? Every one of them looked closely normal to me. Precisely normal. So normal sent chills down my spine and into my marrow. Normal... Not like a neighbor with a power drill in one hand and a subwoofer in the other. Not like a passenger you can often meet in the subway or on public transport. Not like a co-worker on the next table in an open plan office. Not even like a friend who only differs with other humans in his constant insistence. All of them looked normal, as I would expect them to be, with their own downsides but without any superpowers. And Sophia was also cute? I glanced at herself stealthily, not knowing what to say. I'm sorry, I wanted to show you the camp, but was ran off my feet. I didn't miss anything well on my own, I guess. Are you sure you haven't missed anything at all? She smiled so brightly that I had to drop my eyes in confusion. Well, how would I know? It's my first day here. Okay, and what have you seen so far? I've seen the square, the canteen, the football field, and what about the beach? Just, just from afar. You should really go there. Well, let's do it together. <gasps> it's your first date. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We will. Her naturalness started to scare me. But then I thought, what if everything that happens here is how it's supposed to be? And this world looks strangely only strange only to me. Or for them, this is normal. Maybe I was thrown into the past. Yes, that would explain a lot. Can I, can I ask a stupid question? No. <laughs> Slavia smiled and stood up from the table. It's late. Can you find the way to Olga's by yourself? Of course I can, but why should I go there? She'll settle you with someone. What for? Probably this question seems stupid because Slavia burst to good-natured laughter. You need to sleep somewhere, right? Uh, that makes sense. Fine. I'll be off then. Good night. Good uh, night. It's strange that she left in such a hurry. A bundle of keys left in a door lock caught my attention. I was going to catch up to Slavia, but where did she live? Knocking at every door during the middle of the night didn't sound like a bright idea. Uh, let's take the keys. I'd better take them. I'll give them back tomorrow because who knows what happens here at night. Such thoughts gave me chills. It's me who needs to be careful here in the first place. The night, through dark, wasn't silent at all. Though dark, wasn't silent at all. One could hear chirping crickets, the songs of the night birds, and rustling trees from everywhere. A sudden desire to follow Slavia's advice and go to the camp leader's cabin appeared. I don't know why, but the sight of the unknown bronze builder of communism put me in a constructive mood. I sat on the bench and started to recall everything that happened the day. That was all my constructive mood could offer. And here was much brighter than near the canteen, and tardy pioneers were running by, so the place didn't seem scary at all. Bus, summer camp, girls. I was so tired from everything new and strange that I could not come up with a single explanation for what was going on. I heard a barely noticeable rustle nearby. I shivered and looked in that direction. A girl. Reading a book. Lena. And we'll find out what we're going to talk with Lena in the next episode. Okay, anyway, beautiful, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see all you beautiful people in the next episode. Please give this little video a like if you enjoyed it. 
give it a comment and go subscribe if you already haven't please enjoy all my other content and enjoy the outro it's about to hit you right now she called me mr bombastic tell me fantastic touch me on me box she says i'm mr roo me fantastic touch me on me box she says i'm mr roo smooth just like a silk, soft and cuddly, hug me up like a quilt. I'm a lyrical lover.